You're listening to Wasatch High School Athletics. Tyler Moss and Tyler Barrett at Provo High School tonight as Wasatch Lacrosse gets ready to take on the Provo Bulldogs, trying to move their region record to 6-0 and tonight with a victory. This team is good, Tyler. They're, they're flirting with the top five ranking as the state tournament is in sight next week. And uh, these games are big. Provo today, Cedar Valley on Friday. And if they can win both of those, they're in a really good spot heading into the state tournament. But the Wasps have to take it one game at a time here, and Provo is what stands in front of them here tonight. Yeah, Ty, and if we want to just do a quick recap, our last broadcast for lacrosse was Payson, and they dominated that game, Ty, 13-2, to and that game was well in hand by the time we got to the fourth quarter. And I'm grateful you're back on the air, Ty. That fourth quarter, like, it was an exciting <laughs> first, second, and third quarter. Once Wasatch had it in hand, it was still fun to call all the goals that Wasatch was putting in, but didn't have you to just BS with me I, in yeah, the fourth well, quarter. You know, Ty, I, I was spending some time in some warm <laughs> Mexico for my wife's birthday. We went down and and celebrated her birthday, and it was a great time. But I, I, I missed it, Ty. She was probably a little annoyed with me because I had all the broadcasts on down there. And if you haven't checked it out, you need to go to HeberValleyRadio.com. It's not just on 94.5 The Peak, Ty. You can go to HeberValleyRadio.com and click on The Peak for a stream, and you can listen anywhere in the world. I tried it out last week, and, and it's a lot of fun to be able to access that and hear that wherever you're at. But, but not, you even on, not even on the world, Ty. When you were above I, the I, world, when I was you were listening 4, to it. feet above the air, yeah, flying back, I could get it too, Ty. So you're right. And she tolerated me, my wife, that is, <laughs> as I was down there listening to that. But but no surprise to hear that Wasatch dominated in that one, Ty. So uh, since, since that game, they've actually played a couple other ones as well. Tie. They've won a few, but they lost one here this last weekend. Yeah, they beat Springville 14-3, to pretty dominant in that one. Owen Moore scores four goals. Cole Lent had three, and Porter Ware off the bench had four goals and one assist as well. Only a junior. He's been getting a little bit more time. He's up to seven goals on the season. And then they lost to Skyview on Saturday, 13-7. to Skyview, one of the premier programs of 4A. But still, Ty, some good, some good stat lines. Owen Moore had four goals and one assist, and Cole Lent had three goals. So all seven goals happening from Moore and Lent. And just to talk a little bit about the those two real quick, Ty. So when you talk about how good of a year they're having, and, and we're new to this sport, right? And so I didn't know what kind of the numbers were talking about. You know, in baseball, you know, like above 400, that's a really good year. When you take a look at what Owen Moore and Cole Land, and I'm going to throw Connor Osborne in there as well. Owen Moore is number four in the entire state in points scored. So he's got 50 points scored, 28 goals, 22 assists. That's good enough for fourth in the entire state. Mm-hmm. And then fifth in goals scored at 28. You jump over to Cole Land. He's just behind Owen Moore in the points. He's got, or excuse me, they're both tied at number four with 50 points apiece. Cole Len doing it more on the goal side of things. 40 goals, which is good enough for third in the state. And then Connor Osborne with 35 points, number seven in the state. So, I mean, Wasatch has got some premier players that are on the field and, and it's going to be fun for them to watch or to watch them on the field tonight. This Provo team tie is not great. Only 2-11 and 11 on the year. 0-5 in region play. Only scoring 5.2 goals per year, well, or game. Owen Moore and Cole Len themselves are almost averaging five <laughs> goals a game. So, this, this one shouldn't be one that Wasatch has to worry about too much, but you still got to. And this is a sport that we've learned you can score in chun- chunks very quickly if you fall asleep. And so that that's, I think, what the message is going to be from the coaching staff uh, and, today. And Ty, the wins are in the RPI, and it does. You got to play that computer game at this point. But but probably what matters more for this team is the rhythm and how you're playing heading into the state tournament, right? So on, on easy games that the Provo kind of looks on paper, it still matters a lot how they're playing. We've been impressed over the, the last half of the season of the crispness, the chemistry of the team, and, and just really how they flow throughout the field, Tyler, and just running their offense, playing strong defensively, and I think you want to see that. The, the old cliche in sports is you don't want to play down to your competition if you're the superior team, and so that's what you want to look for tonight out here with Wasatch, is are they going to kind of assert themselves as the dominant team here on the field? Can they cruise out to an easy victory? And that's what you want to see to keep the momentum heading to the state tournament. Yeah, and, and Ty, this isn't a team that's getting blown out by every team as well, and this is another message that you can share. They only lost by two to Spanish Fork, lost by one to Springville, and lost by three to Payson, so it's not like this team is going out on the field and they're just getting trounced in 10 and run, if you will, and using a baseball term. They're competitive, and so that's another thing that you can share is, like you said, Ty, let's be crisp, let's go out, let's take care of business early. I think you go ahead and try to get ahead on these guys, don't give them confidence, but you're preparing for that Cedar Valley matchup as well on Friday, and Cedar Valley's good. They're undefeated in region play as well. This is the Dairy King pregame show. Tyler Moss and Tyler Baird on the air. Lacrosse coming up for Wasatch High School. Their season coming to close, as is a lot of spring sports. And as we wrap up this Dairy King pregame show, I want to take a minute to talk about some of the other good things that are going on around Heber Valley and at Wasatch High School right now. Tyler, 
tons of sports action as we talk about. I think, isn't it 10 sanctioned sports right now that are in action for Wasatch High School? Talk a little bit about some of the other things that are going on. Yeah, so uh, baseball-wise, si, it's just you're waiting. It's Fridays when the RPI it's comes the out. Uncomfortable one and right let's now, just right? say me and you have crunched the numbers numerous times every day, and, and we think Wasatch is good. It's going to be 23 or 24, which is where Wasatch needs to be in order to get into the state tournament. So we're watching that. If you go over to softball, exact same bow tie. Going into the last week, they were hovering around 22, 21, lost two games on Monday, so they're scoreboard watching to see if they're going to get in. But if you switch over to like boys soccer, number one team in the state tie, they're the favorites to take home the state title once again this year. Closed out in dominant fashion. They're number one going into the state tournament unless something crazy happens on the RPI. But let's jump over to girls golf tie, and then you were a boys golf coach, and you follow that a little bit more. I'm going to throw it over to you because yeah. this is something... I'm going to say, in in my short memory, since Kerry Summerhays, we have not seen. Now, credit, Kerry did it against the boys, Ty. They didn't have girls golf back in the day, well, so Kerry did it against Tyler, the boys. That's, that's let's my talk thought about here is, is I do coach the boys golf team, and I was wishing that I can get Ellie Joels and over to come play yeah. with us because she is that good, Tyler. The girls golf team had the state tournament this week. They qualified the whole team. And golf works interesting. You can, you can bring a team if they bring the top. 16 teams, I believe. Uh, at least that's what they did with the boys. And then they also qualify individual uh, golfers. You take the top 12 as far as individual scores. Wasatch brought their team, and the team was great, Tyler. Wasatch took fifth place out of 33 teams in, in golf in 5A. The girls really, really golfed well. And Ellie Jo Olson, Tyler, a senior for Wasatch, who is actually signing to golf at SUU tomorrow. She's, she's committed to play golf down there, and you'll see why. She tied for fourth, Tyler, and she just had a great golf tournament. She went... Um, I believe it was plus six with an opening day 78. And, and she's probably going to be frustrated, Tyler, because heading into the 14th hole, she was only plus two. She's having a really good round and then had a couple bad holes to end there. And then day two, she came out and she saw, shot three under par. Tyler, she shot, shot a 69, three under par, ended up moving up the, the ladder and tied for fourth place and just had a phenomenal round. And so Ellie takes fourth, the team takes fifth, and the ladies' golf team really had a great week. So congratulations to them and uh, their success this week in the state tournament. Yeah, a couple other mentions, Ty. Uh, the, the tennis team, which is, again, another sport that hasn't seen a lot of success recently, region champs, and they've advanced everybody into the round of 16. So they're tied for first right now because they have the most guys that are still in it. That gets going tomorrow. It'll be fun to scoreboard watch and see who advances there. And then region track happened at Wasatch today. So, yeah, you, you said it, Ty. I mean, the admin are just bouncing all over the place trying to trying to keep things yeah. in Couple in, uh, control. Couple tennis players that I've been able to talk to, Ty. I haven't been able to talk to all of them, but uh, Cole Ritchie had a first round yeah. bye and and really is in a good spot to make a, a nice run here. State tournament. Ben Goats and Will Santiago, doubles partners. Talking to Ben today, he he really likes their chances to, yep. to make a run at this one as well. So there's going to be some some players here as far as tennis goes to be able to have some su success and make a deep run, Ty. And so we'll keep our eye on that. They'll they'll get started tomorrow, and then they'll hopefully come back and, and have more action here on Saturday as they'll alternate the days in that tennis tournament. But a lot going on here for Wasatch High School. And let's just keep our fingers crossed and hope baseball and softball can, can get into the state tournament and get their action going here this weekend as well. Step away for one more break here as the captains are coming out to midfield, getting us ready to go here. This is Wasatch High School lacrosse getting ready to take on Provo High School. Tyler Moss and Tyler Baird on the on the air with you. You're listening to Wasatch High School Sports, 94.5 The P. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Players are at midfield. We're ready for our opening faceoff here as Bodily is standing at the 50-yard line. The official puts the ball down, and there's the whistle, and we are underway. As we've grown accustomed to seeing so often, Bodily scoops it up and is going to get the opening possession for Wasatch, and we are underway. Wasatch and Provo lacrosse in action. Bodily's going to swing the ball over to Taylor, who's going to wait for the subs to come onto the field. Now Taylor shifts his way in on the right alley, has a shot. No one comes to cut him off. Takes a shot, goes a little low, Tyler, and wide to the right. Moore having a run at it. He's going to keep the possession here for Wasatch. I think Taylor maybe was a little surprised that no one was there to cut him off. Something to keep an eye on, Ty, on the Provo side of things. Their face-off specialist is also one of their, in fact, he is their leading scorer on the year, Ben Park. And so usually when we've called these games, that face-off specialist, they come on and off together, right? So I'm interested to see if Bodley ends up playing a little bit more defense today. If he does happen to lose the face-offs, that doesn't happen too often. So Wasatch may not have to worry about it, but something to keep an eye on. 
a fading shot as, as Moore gets the cor- corner, Tyler. A hot ball coming in high. Provo goalie makes a good stop on it. Ball bouncing high. It's still on the turf. Wasatch trying to find a way to scoop up with it. All kinds of bodies in there, Tyler, waiting to see who comes out of it here. Now the ball squirts free. It's by Taylor, but Provo is going to come away with this one, and they're heading back the other direction on the hands there of Carson Short. Yeah, but a good job from Taylor, Ty. He's able to poke it loose, and Wasatch is able to come up with it. That's Adam Bodley who's able to get the turnover quickly, and Wasatch coming back the other way. Yeah, Bodley leads it up there to his teammate, Tyler and Kiefer. Kiefer standing up top of the box, going to float it over to the left side. Provo, yeah. Provo's extending the defense today, Ty, so we'll see if Wasatch, they're going to move it around the perimeter like they'd like to, but see if Bodley, Lent, some of these guys decide to go one-on-one against well, the spread-out defense. And that's going to work well for Wasatch, Ty, that we've seen. They've got great athletes out here that can really make a move. Osborne, one of these guys right now that we've seen great athleticism. He's got the ball on the left alley, working back to the middle. Now Provo packing it into the center a little bit as Osborne makes his move. Passes to the center to Kiefer. Kiefer, elevator shot from the right side, high, out of bounds. Wasatch keeps the possession. Moore is going to trigger from the X. Yeah, similar to like a Golden State Warriors play there, Ty. So Kieford, who normally plays up. Oh, what a pass oh, here. Sorry, I cut you off. Yeah, we got we to gotta call that as Moore slices from the X and then finds who else but Cole Lent cutting in the middle. And Lent with the great hands handles the pass and then puts it in the top shelf there on the left side. Wasatch strikes first with their first goal. Yeah, I learned my lesson, Ty. I tried to explain some things, and you can't do that because this Wasatch offense is going to make you pay Not for that. Not when Moore and Lent uh, have the ball, Tyler. Owen Moore makes things happen back there at the X position, so you don't want to get caught looking in the other direction when he has the ball. Wasatch takes the 1-0 lead. That goal brought to you by physical at the fifth stop. Wasatch able to get ahead early. Back to midfield for the faceoff is bodily. He'll be going off against Ben Park of Provo. Official puts the ball down, waiting patiently. Now he backs off, and here's your whistle. Bodily cradles it up, and he scoops it up and has it. Now shifting over to the right tight. He maybe has some ideas in his mind to make a move at the goal. Now he backs out. Looked for a moment at that right alley. Now he's going to give it over to Taylor, and Bodily sprints off. Waiting to come on. Adam comes on. Adam Bodily, that is. Kiefer also trots onto the field for Wasatch. Yeah, so far they've gotten the ball to Taylor to try to make those one-on-one moves I was talking about against the spread-out defense of Provo. Keeper's going to swing it over to the left alley to Osborne. Osborne le- looking deep in the alley now to his teammate. That's Lent. Lent circling around on a curl back up to the top of the box. Now over to Kiefer. Kiefer deep in the right alley to Taylor. Taylor jukes right, goes left, looking for a shot. He likes that backhanded left-handed shot. He's got it. Sails wide to the right. That's one of Caleb's strong suits, Tyler. Moving from the right to the left, he's good at coming back with that backhand shot. That one goes a little bit off to the right, but it's a look he's not afraid to take. Moore got the corner, Tyler, close to the crease, loses the ball. He's just trying to take a shot, and the ball trickles in. How about that, Tyler? I think we're going to give the goal to Moore, but the ball kind of missed. It floated up high, hit the turf, and then as the goalie tried to scoop it up, he just whiffed, and, and it ended up below his stick into the goal, and Wasatch has another one, make it 2-0 to zero with 9.34 left here in the first quarter. Well, right now, if you're Wasatch, you can go ahead and take those shots, and you can even extend out the shots from in front of the goal because when Owen Moore's getting it on the X position, Wasatch is just taking all the rest of their play and spreading them past the 20-yard line. And so it's basically one-on-one, and it's to the back of the goalie. So the goalie's in a tight spot, and Moore's been able to hit Lent on the pass to get the goal, and that time Moore just went one-on-one and was able to get the ball in the net. Well, and something about this Wasatch team is their defenders are so physical, Bodley's going to win another one. Tyler, that time he turned it and scooped it back to his teammate in Sluga, and Ben's going to have his first action here, moving from the left over to the right, down in the box. Now Ben's going to back out. But, good to, but see, good tight, to see Ben on the field, Ty. He's been dealing with some injuries. Good to see him back out yeah, on the and, field and today. I want to see these guys get healthy before the tournament, so it is nice to see Ben out there. But but I was going to finish the thought. The Wasatch defenders are so physical, and, and that's something that's hard even when you're on the offensive attack as an opposing team. You know the defenders of Dickerson, Cherry, Stone. They're going to put a hit on you. Provo, to this point in this game, just doesn't seem to have the physicality, right? I mean, it looks like Moore can get whatever he wants slicing through those guys. Right now it's Lent, Tyler, with the ball trying to find some space. Now he's going to back it out, go to the top of the box. Looks like he's got Kiefer. Kiefer's going to swing it over to Jorgensen, who's just checked in. Jorgensen with one hand spins from right back to the left to the middle. The ball's knocked free out of his stick. Provo having a hard time to scoop this one up, though, Tyler, and the ball trickles out of bounds. Wasatch is going to get the possession back in their favor. Leading 2-0, 8.30 left in the first quarter. There's a pass to Lent. Lent can't quite contain it, Ty. The ball hits the turf, and the goalie for Provo this time scoops it up. But Lent knocks the pass down as the ball comes out. Taylor scoops it up, takes another shot high. 
Provo goalie makes a run against Lent. See who they give it to. They're going to give it to Provo, Ty. Provo's done a better job on, the, on this last possession of playing better help side defense. And, and really too bad. It was a great run by Cole before that shot. Just the pass was a little bit low. Wasn't able to handle it. But Wasatch right now dominant. Provo hasn't had it on Wasatch's side of the 50 yet. No, and, and they still can't get it there, Tyler. They struggle to get the ball in their possession. Wasatch steals it away. There's a long shot from about 35 yards out, Tyler. It's handled by the goalie. He's trying to get that thing back out over here to uh, the left side with Provo. Provo just struggling to get out of these Wasatch's attackers' way. Taylor knocks the ball down. Caleb's got a steal. He's on the attack. He got a two-on-two. Taylor and Lent. Taylor with a shot, and it's in! A scooping shot off the turf. Hit it about the, the three-yard line outside the goal, and then bounced up and in. And Caleb Taylor's got a goal. Wasatch now leads 3-0. Well, the old cliche of your best offense is your, or the good offense is your best defense. That's literally what's happening right now. Dickerson, Stone, Cherry, get a lawn chair. I mean, they, they, they haven't even crossed the 50-yard line yet. And, and it's not just because Wasatch has been dominant offensively, but whenever Pro has gotten the possession, the attackers and the middies for Wasatch have just been relentless at keeping the ball on their side of the 50. Back to midfield we go for our faceoff. Bodily, 3-for-3 three three so far in this one for Wasatch. There's your whistle. Bodily trying to bat that one back to his teammate. Now instead, he's just going to scoop it up himself and cradle it in. Nice job boxing out to get that ball in his possession. Bodily checked in the back. He keeps his possession, Tyler, though. Handles it. Stands up straight and puts a shot to the back of the net from about the 20-yard line. Spencer got checked, Tyler. I was surprised the flag didn't come out. He handled the off-balance pressure, stood back up, and you got another goal for Wasatch. 4-0 to zero already here in the first quarter. Uh... Every sport has a mercy rule, except for maybe basketball, right? Like, yeah. I think Provo's hoping for one so far. At well, this rate, Wasatch has scored four goals in four minutes and 14 seconds. So the, and, and there is a mercy rule in the cross, Tyler, <coughs> when they get up by, up by double digits. In it just keeps half, rolling, the right? The clock will roll, yep. Well, it might be triple digits by the second half if Wasatch <laughs> keeps scoring at this pace. Well, bodily, you don't see that too often, Ty, but you do see it in the cross where the face-off man gets the ball and tries to take it coast-to-coast. Bodily made it look easy there. Wasatch leading 4-0. Seth Johnson out there, Ty. He's going to get his crack at a face-off here, and he's going to, oh, came away with it. It's close. Three Wasatch players around there, and it's Kiefer who's going to scoop it up, Tyler. So Wasatch wins their fifth face-off. And before I can finish explaining it, we've got another goal, Tyler. The ball ended up in Owen Moore's hand, who is about seven yards in the direct front of the goal. And he turned and just put it to the back of the net, Ty. This poor Provo goalie doesn't have much of a chance. It's, It's like Wasatch is just getting so deep that they're shooting almost as if there's no goalie in there. Well, and what Kiefer did a good job is he went as hard as he could, similar to what we saw from Taylor, and on the previous possession, Taylor took the shot. That time, Kiefer looks like he's going to go ahead and just go coast to coast instead, keeps his eyes up, finds more right in front of the goal. Great pass from Kiefer. Give him the assist. I, I'm going to challenge you to keep your eyes on these defensive guys back here for, for Wasatch, Tyler. I, I'm curious what's going on in their mind right now with Wasatch dominating so much offensively on our sixth faceoff Guess who's got it again, Tyler? It took well, a little bit there, but Ben Sluga comes in and scoops this one up. After well, and, and something curve. that's going to stretch this tie is my my roster is a varsity roster. This is going to get stretched because I've already seen some guys we haven't seen for most of the year. So I'm going to have to pull up on my phone the big roster because well, uh, that wasn't Johnson or bodily. That it's was number 49. You work over here, Tyler. You're getting comfortable. <laughs> like the defenders back there for Wasatch. Yeah, I'm sitting on your right and the defenders are on your left. I need to be sitting on your side because that's where I want to be. Wasatch is leading 5-0 to zero right now, only five minutes into this ball game. You're listening to Wasatch High School lacrosse here on 94.5 The Peak. Wasatch on the attack. It's Osborne. Takes a deep shot. Ty, that ball was batted down and now the ball is finally crossed midfield. That ball bounced 40 yards back the other direction. Provo trying to scoop it up. Dickerson finally gets some action. He knocks that one for Cherry's in here trying to check Provo, but Provo does come up with it, Tyler. So Provo into Wasatch territory for the first time. It's Keegan Neal with the ball. He's deep in the left alley now behind the net. Cherry over here giving him all kinds of problems, and Cherry looks like he's almost about twice the size there of him, Tyler. So Neal not wanting to get in there. Now Neal trying to pass it back to his teammate, but his teammate there in Tweet can't handle it. And the ball trickles out of bounds. Good pressure there from Cherry and Osborne, Tyler. They force a turnover on Provo. Yeah, Osborne getting some defensive time. Now they're going to rope it up here to Miles Brown. He's going to take it. He might have a chance to go coast to coast, get his first goal on the season. Yeah, Ty, he's just weaving in and out of Provo. There's a shot, and it's in. How about that? Miles Brown, a little showtime, Tyler. Got that one about the 40. Snaked his way through Provo and put that one top corner. Wasatch now leads 6-0. Everybody's going to get some action today, Ty. 
It didn't take long for Brown to make his presence felt there, Tyler. Osborne leads it up on a deep pass, and Brown puts it to the back of the net. Provo wants to talk it over. They're down 6-0. Wasatch leads 6-0 here in the first quarter. First quarter action brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. And, Ty, this is more of what we'd see in the fall, right? About six minutes left in the first quarter. Wasatch with a couple of field goals up 6-0. I said it's lacrosse. Yeah, like maybe. I, I was looking at the positive. Or we went for two and didn't get it, or yeah, or, or, or PAT pending, right? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, we're scoring quickly, Tyler. This this one could get away here quickly if Wasatch keeps the pace they're on. Bodily wins another faceoff out of the timeout, Tyler. Turns and passes it back to Hall, who's checked in for his first action. Hall triple teamed, has the ball checked out, but he scoops it back up. There's a back check. Now, after Cameron draws three defenders over his way, he's going to pass it over to Josh. Dickerson now on the move near midfield. Floats it up over to Jorgensen. Jorgensen calmly handles it and passes it over here to the right alley where Richie Clark or Archie Clark into the game for the first time. Archie Clark's going to make his first action here, Ty. Now the ball deep in the alley over to Taylor here on the right side. Taylor spins back into the middle on a sprint. There's a shot. Tyler goes wide to the right of the goal by about three feet. More back there at the X position, just casually waiting to get a ball and scoop it up and throw it back in. Wasatch in front, 6-0, 540 left here in the first. Moore has the corner right on the crease. There's a shot. Good save by the goalie, tie. That ball was on the goal, but the goalie was able to bat it down. Moore gets a, a stick, though, Tyler, on the outlet pass, and that ball goes out of bounds. Wasatch's attackers have been really, really active with the attack coming back the other direction, Tyler. They've, they've turned offense into defense quickly, and they've given Provo fits. Number 16 on the field for the first time, Julian Kent, a junior. Clark with the ball at the top of the box right now. He's standing about the 35-yard line, given about 10 yards of space by the Provo defender. Now he makes his move to the right. He's got an alley, doesn't take the shot. Instead goes down low to Taylor. Taylor looking for a shot, bouncing it towards the goal, but the goalie tips it out to the right. Wasatch will keep the ball. I like that shot there from Taylor, Ty. He's tried to go, he said, like the elevator shot multiple times, and he's missed. That time he tried to go ground ball, and that time he put it on the goal, had to have the goalie kick that one away. like the adjustment there from Taylor. On the attack goes the Waz, Tyler. A, a shot that had some alligator arms because of a check from the Pro Defenders. Trickles towards the goal, but it does not find its way in. That shot was from Porter Ware, Ty. Provo gets the rebound off of the miss, and they're coming back the other direction. Goalie's just going to do it himself, Ty. He hasn't been able to find anybody passing, so he's just going to take it all the way up to midfield. Yeah, he, he actually cross, crosses midfield, Tyler. Now he floats it up, but there's no one there, and Wasatch is able to come snatch it away. Dickerson, who's been really good, yeah. probably the standout defender so far for Wasatch, Ty scoops it up. His pass floats out of bounds, though, looking for Taylor running down the right side. Taylor can't quite handle it, goes out of bounds. Provo gets the possession back. I'm taking some notes from the defenders on trying to keep the bugs away from me, Ty. Like, yeah, if you missed the pregame, we found where all the snow is melting <laughs> to, right? Down here by Provo High School. There's a lot of water down here right now, and the mosquitoes have come with them. So Tyler's waving all kinds of things over that you can't see right now, trying to keep the bugs away from him. Provo looking for their first shot on goal here, Tyler. In the right alley, there is a shot, and... It finds its way to the back of the net, Tyler. Hit down low. I thought for a moment we were going to have a save there, but the ball did find its way into the back of the net. So make it 6-1. to one. Provo capitalizes and gets their first point of the ball game. Yeah, and some subs into the game for the Was. You had Braden Curtis, who hasn't seen a lot of time this year, and actually Logan Calder getting the call at goal today instead of the normal starter, Sam Good. The Calder's been good, Ty, on the season. If you take a look at his stats, um... And, of course, when I adjusted things, didn't uh, update his stats. But uh, he's around 60% on his save percentage on the year when he's got time. Bodily back to midfield for the faceoff. He's been perfect in his chances today. Wasatch has won all of them. Wins another one. Just so physical, Tyler. He's quick and physical. It's a great combination with your faceoff man. Provo tried to go a different faceoff man that time to try to get some momentum there. Didn't work. Oh, nice move here from Taylor. Yeah, Taylor breaking ankles. He's into the middle. He's got a shot on goal, and he's got a goal, Tyler. Taylor scoots one bottom right. That one just kind of skipped into the goal right near the goalie's feet. And Wasatch gets the point right back. 7-1, to one, Wasatch leading. 3.49 left in the first quarter. And again, Ty, he's been trying to go upstairs on most of his shots. The last two, he's gone downstairs and was able to connect on that one. Second goal of the game for Taylor. Wasatch leads 7-1. to one. 
out for the face-off. Going to get some new faces out here for Wasatch on this one. Hartford going to come out here on the right side. Seth Johnson's going to take the face-off duties. And then over on that right side, number 28 is Tucker Calderwood. There's your whistle. And the face-off is won, but it's dropped. T Calderwood coming in, trying to scoop it up, and he's got it. Calderwood running down the right sideline. Stick in the right hand, cradling it back and forth. Now he'll go two-hand, trying to work his way back across into the middle. Floats past deep into the right alley to Taylor. Taylor coming off a goal just barely. Tyler's been really, really good on the offensive attack this game so far for Wasatch, who leads by six already. 7-1 is the score. Taylor floats the pass back up to the top. Ball is bobbled there, though. Luke Bangeter, number 41. Now we're going to float a pass, swinging back over here to the left side. Looks like we've got... That's not Jorgensen. The, the jersey's a little bit tangled. Having a hard time seeing the number. Excuse me. 27, Jack Hansen. Pack pass back to Taylor. Taylor looking for some action. Taylor's not looking to make a move. Tyler trying to get his teammates involved right now. Now the pass comes back down to Taylor. Taylor looking to pass right back up to the top. Wasatch obviously trying to work something from an offensive standpoint here on this possession. The pass swinging back over to the left alley, though, is not hand. The ball right near the sideline. Who's going to come up with it? It's the Wasps, Tyler. They get it back into their possession. Yeah, good hustle there from Jay Canson. He's able to get the ball back. He's double teamed, though, and he does have the ball pop out, and Provo come back the other way. Provo attacking back the other direction, Tyler. Down 7-1, to 2.36 left here in the first quarter. Bulldogs looking for a response. Keegan Neal with the ball right now in his possession. Now he's going to back out, wait for some of his teammates to come on through substitutions. Wasatch is going to bring Boyer onto the field along with Colby Harford, those defensive middies. Neal over to Park. Park quickly to Quintana. Quintana making a move. Now a pass back in the middle. It's cut off and intercepted by Cameron Hall. Hall and the Wasp back on the attack the other direction. Hall sprinting from left to right. He's got about 60 yards. Give him 70 yards. He's to the 25, to the middle. Got a man open. Can Ware finish? There's the shot, and it's good. Porter Ware just standing there by the crease. Hall finds him, and Ware delivers. Wasatch now in front, 8 to win. 1. A great take there from Hall, Tyler. Had it all the way by Wasatch's goal, and he sprinted about 70 yards down the field before finding his teammate Ware down there near the crease. Well, and just to set up some things from the defensive side of things, Ty, Wasatch defender had slipped, and Jack Emma did a great job on the help side coming and forcing the player to make the pass, and then Cam Hall anticipated it perfectly, intercepts it, goes coast to coast, and, and Ty, everybody's being able to score, but rather than get selfish and try to take a bad shot, makes a perfect pass to Ware, who's right in front of the goal, where it does a good job of going downstairs and getting the goal. New face-off man, Ty, and I can't tell for sure. I think that's uh, jo Jonah Ware, actually. Oh, so Ware. this is the little brother of Porter, only a freshman. And Ty, he's two for two today as well with the face-offs. Oh, nice. Jonah snatches that one up, wearing number 49 here today. Uh, misses on the pass, though, to Taylor, and it's going to be a turnover going back Provo way. Provo trailing 8-1 to one to Wasatch. Wasatch looking to move their region record to 6-0 with a victory here today. And then they'll try to finish off a perfect region record against Cedar Valley tie, who you say also has a perfect region record yeah. right now. That should be a good finale on Friday if Wasatch can keep the consistency in this one where they've dominated the entire first quarter. See if they can bring an undefeated record into that game. Wow, Wasatch trying to be region champs for the second year in a row. Quarterfinalists last year. The goal is to get into the semifinals this year. And, and one thing we haven't talked about, Ty, is, is the importance of the RPI. We've talked about Wasatch baseball and softball looking just to get into the postseason. Lacrosse is in, but there's still some seeding things that, that you're looking at here. And, and if you're talking about the best teams, Park City, Brighton, and Olympus are the three kind of top dogs of 5A. Below that, you've kind of got a chunk of teams that are really good, like Wasatch. And so if you're Wasatch and you want to get into those semifinals, you want to try to get that four or five, because then you'll avoid those three teams all the way to the semifinals. And so that's lot, something to keep an eye on. A lot to play for yeah. is, is what you're saying, Tyler. Carson Schwartz of Provo kind of ran a little J action if you're looking at the field and seeing a letter J. He took it all the way down the right side and then scooped his way around the X position and came and curled on the right and took a shot and he missed. Wasatch was able to get the possession back and before I can finish explaining that, Tyler, we're back down the other direction for another goal. 
And that one off the hands, was it Lent? Lent, uh, Lent got it, but, but a great pass from Gary Pearson. And Gary Pearson got his first assist in the pro, in, excuse me, in the pacing game, only a junior, and does a great job, fills it, takes a peek over to his left-hand side, finds Lent cutting to the net, puts it right where Lent just makes it easy to catch and put it into the goal. Well, if you're looking for offense, you came to the right spot here yeah. tonight. Wasatch Lacrosse leading 9-1 to one already, and we still have a minute left to go in the first quarter. It has been complete domination for the Wasps so far in this one. Yeah, I think I think the, the, the real story here, Ty, is how many bug bites. If Wasatch can score more goals than with bug bites that we get in the game today. Bodily's back in for this faceoff. Tyler, there's your whistle at midfield, and Bodily has it. Scoops it back to Hall. Now just showing off a little bit, Tyler, with that move. Hall brings it back in. Cameron, who's already had a great run at the goal and an assist, looking for some more space here. Floats it up to Moore. Moore's come out of that X position really for the first time today. Now he's in the right alley. Finds Hall deep in the right alley. Now Hall surveying the defense. Thinking about heading over to the right. Now he backs it out. Shuffling, shuffling. Back over to the 30 near the top of the box. Wasatch with all six attackers, or excuse me, five attackers other than Hall, back down there by the goal line. Yeah, I really just tried to go man-on-man, man, let him go one-on-one. -on -one. But pretty good def defense there from Jet Showman of Provo. Didn't allow Call to get in, or excuse me, Hall to get into the lane. Yeah, and Hall on the pass. Tyler Z it couldn't get the lane. The pass goes high and out of bounds. Provo gets the ball back. Bulldogs on the attack, trailing big. It's 9-1 in favor of Wasatch. Seven seconds left in the first quarter. Probably not going to be enough time to get a shot off. And Provo looking to just kill the clock. Floats a pass over to the left side, and there is your horn. First quarter comes to a close, and it's domination from Wasatch, leading 9-1. to one. Stick around. Second quarter action coming up after a word from our sponsors. Second quarter action brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop, your locally owned and operated physical therapy clinic, serving you from head to toe, including vertigo to sports injuries, proudly serving the Heber Valleys for the last 40 years. Ty, first quarter standouts for you in this one. A lot of, lot of offensive action. Man, that, that's the toughest questions you've asked me this year. I mean, football, basketball, soccer, baseball, whatever we've called, that's the toughest question. You have Cole Lamb with a couple of goals, Owen Moore with a couple of goals. Um, but just the team effort and just some pretty play across the board from everybody. I love that out of the nine goals that have been scored, seven of them have assists. And so that shows, like in a game like this, Ty, like people start to want to just get their own, right? Like, oh, this is a chance for me to get a goal. But you've seen like Cameron Hall, for example, with a great great assist that gets um, Porter Ware onto the field and it gets him on the scoreboard as well. So just across the board, good play. Face-offs, Wasatch is perfect so far. So how about we give a shout-out to Bodley, Seth yeah. Johnson, and Jonah Ware, all three of them perfect so far. Been really good. Going to have some subs in to start the second quarter. Looks like on defense, Trey Cherry is going to come in. Uh, in his older brother's spot, Tyler Miles Brown also heading back there to that position. And Jack Emmett. So you've got three new guys on the defensive line there for Wasatch. And then at midfield, it looks like we're going to have Harford, Osborne, and Bodily. Spencer Bodily, that is, here at midfield. Spencer's going to go on the face-off attack. Cole Lent there is on the attacker position. Tyler Owen Moore in there. And is that Adam Bodily? I'm having a hard time seeing that last one. It's either Adam or Gary Pearson. I think it's Gary Pearson who's on the field, Ty. And I just need to clarify, we are calling lacrosse. When you said defensive line and you've got Cherry, Brown, and uh, who's the other one that's and, out? And I mean, those, those are good-sized guys. So they might be confused for a defensive line in football when you say D-line. But it is lacrosse, and it is a very physical defensive line. Oh, there, has speaking out of there. physical, tie, there's a good play there from Provo. Bodily scooped the ball out towards Osborne. Osborne came to get it, but he got sandwiched there by Carson Schwartz. Schwartz comes up with the ball, floats it up to his teammate. Provo having a hard time getting through these new defenders, Tyler, though. That's Verdorn, who's having a hard time getting through. Brown, Emmett. Osborne in there causing all kinds of fits. Now we've got a whistle, a penalty flag on Wasatch. Yeah, Emmett's going to get called for tripping, Ty. And, and it was. He went down low to try to get a ball that, that was happened to be on the ground for a second. And when he did, got the leg and a pretty good trip. So Provo will have numbers on their side on this attack. They're down 9-1. to one. Just starting the second quarter, Wasatch has been able to dominate to this point. Only 16 seconds into this quarter. Yeah, first power play opportunity for either team. Speaking of golfers, yeah, Ty. Hearing one of our golfers there <laughs> that you heard on the radio earlier this year, Seth Urich, Tyler, qualified for the state tournament on the boys' side. He's saying hi on his way by. Always good to see Seth. I love, Seth I love Seth's story of I just went out and golfed a lot, looked at YouTube videos, Watch YouTube. Yeah, figured I could man. do this. 
Yeah, a most amazing thing though that you saw is his stat of using the same golf ball for three yes. straight rounds yeah. and uh, the year. <laughs> that was great. He, was, he was on fire. <laughs> Ty, some action come back the other direction. Wasatch has gotten the ball back in their favor here. Harford with the ball looking out for Sluga, but they were a little close, Tyler. That pass just a little bit off as Sluga was kind of slicing. Harford thought he was going to be dicing and threw the pass over his head. Goes out of bounds. Provo's going to keep the possession. Yeah, and, and why that's just if you're a coach, you're not happy with that is you, you want to kill some power plays when you play against better teams. Those are big deals because you just gave Provo another opportunity against the power play to try to get a goal. Yeah, and the Bulldogs are back trying to make a run at it. Ben Park with the ball in his hands. Standing at the top of the box over on the right side. Wasatch in his zone giving him plenty of space right now. Sluga's waiting at about the 20 for him. Parks can float it over to his teammate working on the left alley over there. That's Carmen. Carmen deep in the alley now looking for someone back up top. Can't find anyone. Wasatch kills the power play. So Noah Kiefer now comes out into the field. Wasatch is back to full strength. Park at the top of the box. Tyler now looking over the right side. Looks like we're going to have uh, Ware. Now Park spinning back over to the middle. Low elevator shot, scooping off the tur- sa- turf, sails over to the right side. Bulldogs behind making a run at it. They'll keep the possession. That's Neal back there. He's the one spot, right spot on the offensive side of things. Ty Ben Park, 37 points on the year, good enough for sixth in the state in that category. So keep an eye on him. Wasatch has done a good job of shutting down really anything offensively for Provo. But that's who they want to try to get the ball to. Neal at the X goes back out to Siemper. Siemper quickly looking for his teammate. He's got Wakefield. Wakefield is forced outside, though. Now he's all the way over to the right. Jukes left, back right, back to the left, but it's stolen away by Wasatch. Nice job by Kiefer. Good, good defense from Kiefer, and he's on the run. Tyler Wasatch has numbers. Four on three right now. Kiefer, no one on him. Now he draws a defender, looking for more. No, he's got a shot himself. Nice save from the goalie, though, who tips it up and over the crossbar, out of bounds. Wasatch will keep the possession. 9.43 left here in the second quarter. Nice run there from Kiefer. Really the best shot. He didn't have a defender that came out, but what Provo did a good job of was forcing him to the goal line extended position. Didn't have a great angle. Adam Bodily swings the ball over to Kiefer. Kiefer waiting for his teammate to run on. Osborne coming on for the Wasps. Now Kiefer will float it over to him. Right alley. Now deep in the alley to Moore. Moore sizing up the defense. Going to go back to the X position. That's uh, Gary Pearson. Pearson floats the pass around to Lent. Lent back to Bodily. Just circling this around the horn right now, Tyler. Bodily over to Osborne. Osborne back to Bodily. Bodily working from the left to the right. Now draws a double team. Checked in the back. No flag comes out. It was kind of a side check there in the back. Now to Moore. Moore coming back to the middle. Shot on goal. Wide right. Out of bounds. Pearson behind making a run at the X. Wasatch will keep it. One thing Wasatch has done a good job of is drawing the double team, and then whenever somebody gets it off the double team, they know that they've got an opportunity to try to get to the net. Moore did it on that one. He recognized that Osborne had the double team, and so he attacked that net. Oh, Ty, that's a good move from Connor. Got the corner on the right side, but it wasn't a tight corner. He's coming out on the right side, had a really clear alley, got the arms extended, and fired a bullet in there, but it went about a foot to the left of the goal. Out of bounds. The shot will stay with Wasatch, though, as Pearson. We'll reactivate the offense. 9-1 to one, the score. Wasatch with the lead. 8.40 left to go in the first half. Pearson looking for that same corner. He's cut off. Now to land at the top. Shot and goal. And it's good. <coughs> Excuse me as I'm choking on, on myself over here, Tyler, for a second. But Lend, another good shot. That one, not his normal style that you see. Usually he's kind of slicing his way through and getting a pass, and he delivers. That time, Tyler, he was on a curl and from about 15 yards out put a heater to the back of the net. Is that a hat trick for old Cole Lent? Yeah, he's got three already in this one. Wasatch leading 10-1. to Have one. you seen the, the Anaheim Angels when they hit a home run? Have you seen what they, they've got like a, and you're the history buff. It, it, it's a, like a Mayan head gear that they oh, put on or I something like that. This, no. I feel like at this point with as many goals as Moore and Lent are scoring, they need something like that, that when they get their <laughs> hat trick, they go and put something on over the top of their helmet. Hey, you're a creative guy. Maybe you ought to get something designed up and take it down there for them, Ty. These guys are putting enough offensive action on the field that we could have some fun with that. And then if you get the double hat trick, that's when you go with the big sombrero, right? Like a huge <laughs> sombrero. The double hat trick. Now that's a doozy. Wasatch, Seth Johnson wins another faceoff, and the Was have the possession, leading 10-1. to 1. Lent is in the corner right now on the left side. Thinks about making a move and said he's going to back it out and go to his teammates. Clark, top of the left alley, now deep to Lent in, in the deep left alley. Pearson behind the goal. Ball working its way nicely around the horn right now. Moore back up top to Jorgensen. Jorgensen, Ty, talking to his dad before. He's been he's been dealing with a little injury himself, nursing a sore hamstring. 
probably going to be somewhat limited in this one, trying to get him healthy for the end of the season start of the playoff. Now bodily Spencer, that is. Tyler Spencer trying to make a run, getting some offensive look. Has the ball knocked free. Bodily trying to battle to get this thing scooped back up. Misses on the scoop, Tyler. Provo trying to come in and snatch it away. Still nobody has it. Ball on the turf, and Cole Lentz got it. He's just always in the right place at the right time. Lent back to the middle. Clark, Clark sizing up the man-to-man defense. Now to the right, Spencer. Spencer wants a shot Ooh. off the post. Sails off the left post and fires out near the 40-yard line. Oh, that's as close as it gets, Tyler. Shot on the right alley, hits the left post, and ricochets out to the 40-yard line on the left side. Wasatch was the closest as that ball went out, and so they're going to keep the possession, but a little different activation, Tyler. Usually you see that coming from the back in the X. Instead, Lent's going to be starting it here from about the 40-yard line. Lent, oh, there's a good look, Tyler. Lent finds Clark, who's waiting just on the left side of the crease, catches it, and then quickly turns and fires it to the back of the net. Give Lent the assist and Clark the goal on that yeah, one. Yeah, and you're just seeing the poise of this Wasatch attack, Ty. That time, Lent tried to go one-on-one, drew the double team. Instead of panicking, takes one step back, eyes up, finds Clark wide in front of the net. Perfect pass. Clark does a good job of handling and putting it in the net. Wasatch takes the 10-goal lead. Yeah, big here. 11 to 1 in this one. Still have 7 12 left in the first half, Ty. Wasatch on their way to activating the mercy rule here in the second half. Been so dominant in this one so far. There's your face off at midfield. Johnson again is in for Wasatch, and he's got it, Ty. He wins the possession, kicks it back over towards Wasatch, where Tucker Calderwood is able to come in and scoop that one up. Now trying to move the ball forward. Wasatch loses the possession. And Provo's able to come in with Schumann, who scoops it up, gets the ball back to Provo. Schumann careless with the ball, though, trying to float it out to his teammate. It's dropped by Tweet, but Tweet is able to recover, make a run. But now here comes Jack Emmett to knock the ball free. Tweet recovers, scoops it back up off the turf, and now throws a lazy little floater over there to his teammate, Tyler, which barely makes it to him. And we're going to have a whistle. We're going to have a procedure penalty here on Provo, and Wasatch gets the ball back. Tucker wasting no time trying to come back the other direction. That's Calderwood. Tucker Calderwood tight. Has a look at the goal instead. Wasatch is going to call him back and make some substitutions. A few different players are going to run on. Calderwood, in fact, is going to be one that comes off for this possession. On the spin, Wasatch falls. That's Luke Bangeter trying to make a move. He got tripped up. Inadvertent trip, though, so no flag comes out. Wasatch scrambling does keep the ball in their possession. Isaiah Hansen. Scoops this one up. He's out near the 40-yard line, now backing out near the 45. Straight on in front of the goal. Now makes his run. Fakes left, back to the right. Now in the alley, trying to float it back to Lent in the middle, but the pass never got there. Tyler scooped back up by Provo, and Provo gets the steal. Jackson Pay coming back the other direction. Pass out near the 40. Does find its way to the Bulldogs. Taki Taki. Taki 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 now turns. Looking for his teammate, Neil. Neil up, but he's looking at a, a two on five, so he decides to back it out and wait for his teammates to come down with yeah, him. You don't like to go when you see all those black jerseys in front of you, <laughs> especially when they're as the big, size of Wasatch's Wasatch is, black, yeah, black jerseys. Some physically imposing defenders out there right now. <clears throat> Didn't talk about the girls across team, Ty. They're as well a top ten team going into the state tournament. Lost a heartbreaker last night. And, again, we're learning as we go with lacrosse. Was talking to their head coach, Trish Miller, and – they got a, a yellow card in the last five minutes, and it's like soccer. They don't have, like, the, the penalty box. If you get a, two yellow cards, you're kicked out of the mm-hmm. game. And so the last five minutes, Wasatch had to play a man down and end up giving the game-winning goal up in those last five minutes. Well, that's a heartbreak. But, again, still, still sitting in the top ten and are probably going to get a bye in the first round. Did notice there's a lot of the ladies lacrosse players down, down here, here watching right. this one. I specifically noticed Grace Urker, a standout player there for the Lady Wasps, is down here supporting the boys, Ty. Bulldogs having a hard time finding any space to get a shot off. That entire time we were talking, they are just kind of circling around the net but never really getting close. And the Wasatch defense stands strong and forces a procedural issue on the Bulldogs, and Wasatch takes it back. Emmett with the ball. He's made a run all the way across midfield. Now he's to the 40, floats it up to his teammate in Ware. Ware's going to back it out and wait for some substitutions and numbers to come back into Wasatch's favor. Ware floats it back to the middle of the bodily. Bodily took his eye off for just a second on the low pass, and it hits the turf. But Osborne slides in on the substitution and is able to come scoop it back up. 11-1 is the score. 4-12 left here in the first quarter. Wasatch in front. Osborne looking for an angle for the shot. Gets double teamed, so instead goes down to the right alley. 
And a shot from Taylor sails to the left. Yeah, tough went, angle for Taylor. Yeah, tough angle. He went back to the elevator shot instead of that low um, downstairs shot. Pearson, though, behind on the X position, is able to keep possession for the loss. Gets it to Porter Ware. And again, tie eight goals on the air for Ware. He's had himself a good second half of the season, including four goals against Springville. Already has one today as well. Yeah, so far, Ware has some deceptive quickness, too, doesn't he? He kind of broke free and had a moment of daylight. Instead, he's passed it back out to his teammates. Caleb Taylor is now looking for a little space, Ty. And he's a different player, Ware is, because he's got a lot of size to him. A lot of Wasatch's attackers are more of the quickness. Ware can put himself near that crease, and he's got a big enough body that he can just body the guys away and still be able to get that ball and get it in the net. Taylor looking for that shot, working on the backhanded, kind of left-handed uh, power shot, going for a bounce. Bounce misses the goal. Wasatch will keep the possession. Pearson behind the goal. Going to activate on the offense for Wasatch. He quickly floats it back up to the top where Osborne is looking to make some work here. Osborne spinning back to the right. He has a shot go high over the crossbar. Out of bounds. Pearson back at the X again is going to activate the offense one more time. Yeah, so what Wasatch has gone to offensively, Ty, is it's like a four low look like you'd see in basketball. Whoever has the ball. And again, I talk, Ty. And maybe, maybe that's the key is I just need to start, just need to start talking. talking. Yeah, let me, let me cut you off for a second because how about that from Gary Pearson? Uh, Tyler he made a move left, spun back to the right, got the corner, and then drew the defenders. And he saw Osborne slide right in front of the goal about five yards out, put a perfect pass there, and Connor knew just what to do with it. Took the ball, put it to the back of the net. Wasatch takes a 12 to 1 lead, although there was a flag, Tyler. Is that flag going against the Wasatch? No, the that's, that's okay, against Provo. It was, a late, it was a late hit, and it was actually too late. They're actually going to put him in the box despite the goal. And so it'll be. Uh, 12-1 to the score. And to go back to Pearson, Ty, we didn't, we didn't see him in the first four or five games that oh, we called. Good. Three assists already in the two games that we've called. Not very big, but he does a great job of putting that ball right where those attackers need it in order to get it in the back of the net. <clears throat> Wasatch leading by 11. 3-11 left here in the first half. And we're back to midfield for another faceoff. There's your whistle. It's a struggle for it here, Tyler, but it is going to be one. That's Jonah Wasatch Ware. East, or was that Ware? Excuse me. Ware. I, I keep thinking yep, that's Boyer. Tie that four and the one. Get me confused. Easton Boyer, number nine. Boyer, oh, Ware yeah. is um, Jonah is Ware, 49. Fresh, yeah, freshman. Porter Ware's little brother, a good athlete as well. And he's done a great job. Tyler wins that face off, and Wasatch leading by 11 has another offensive possession with a power play. Taylor wants a deep shot. Tyler, that one from about the 25 on the right alley. That one's blocked by the goalie. Sails out of bounds after the ricochet. Wasatch will keep the possession. Adam Bodily is standing back here behind the goal. He's going to get some action that, at the X position. That was a good shot by Taylor Ty right on. He makes the goalie make a save. The goalie hasn't had a good game so far at making those shots on goal or the saves on shot and goal. And oh, there wow. There's a deep shot from the 25. That's Ware stepping up, and Porter Ware has a goal in the back of the net. Tyler, that a deep one, but nobody there to stop. So he got the arms fully extended. And had some real steam behind that. Wasatch now ahead 13 to 1, 238 left in the first half. Yeah, good to see Ware getting getting some time on the field. And 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 Ty, he's just you can tell he's got great state control. We talk about Cole Lynn and his ability to just snatch the ball out of the air no matter where it is. Porter's been able to show that he can score near the crease. He now scores from about 15 yards out. He can score from that goal line extended position that's not a great angle. Just has a good job and good ball control on his shots. Spencer Bodily back to midfield for the faceoff. He wins it and flips it back to Sluga. And Sluga's got that look, Ty. He's, he's going to come down and get some offensive action himself a for a minute. He took a peek. <laughs> he's, uh, he's about the 30-yard line. Now the ball works his way back over to Pearson, who wants a shot. The shot never makes it to the goal, though. Pro was able to knock it down, Tyler. That's McLean. And McLean scoops it up and has the ball himself come back the other direction. But there the ball's knocked free. A nice job from Wasatch and Jorgensen to hit the back of the stick and knock it free. Jorgensen then takes it coast to coast, Tyler, after snatching it away near midfield. Jorgensen all the way down the right side and finds some daylight and puts the shot to the bottom of the left corner of the net. Wasatch in front now, 14-1. to 1. What a great individual effort from Jorgensen. Yeah, he, he start, all started with the takeaway, gets the ground ball. He's just filling up the stat sheet, Ty. That's like a rebound and assist and point a bucket all in the same possession. It doesn't take much time for him to fill up the stat sheet, Tyler. Only a few can, seconds. Can we call him? Spot. Can we call him Jace the Joker, J Joker Jorgensen? Rice fills up the stat sheet like That's Joker. Like, like Jokic? Uh, yeah. Is that, yeah. The Joker? I yeah, like the it. the Joker. That's a, you start working on some good nicknames for these guys over here. You've had some interesting <laughs> ideas. Ty, you got the, the hat trick headgear you want to start yeah, getting going. Yeah, I like now that you got one. the Joker Jorgensen. 
Wasatch on the faceoff. Had it for a moment, Tyler, and as Hall turned to look for his teammates, the ball actually fell out of his net, and so Provo, opportunistic, snatched it away. Pretty good play from Taki Taki. Tyler Provo was able to poke it free and then is able to get the ground ball after poking it free as well. Down by 13, the Bulldogs are looking for any sign of life here in this one. Keegan Neal with the ball for Provo right now. Wasatch leading 14-1. to Now up top to the top of the box, Ben Park looking for some space, but Cameron Hall doing a great job to mark him defensively. Hall forcing him back into the middle where he's got some help. Park over to his teammate, and we got a quick shot on goal there from Siemper, Tyler, but he misses wide to the right. That, that was good offense for Provo, really the first good offense we've seen. It was a good little move from Park. Park, the best attacker on the Provo side of things, was able to make the move, drew the double team, and was able to find his teammate, and the teammate puts it off the post. A pretty good shot, just not able to find the back of the net. Verdorn's going to hand over to Park. Park trying to work one-on-one on Hall, and he's got the corner, Tyler, but doesn't take the shot as he saw Jack Emmett coming over to help. A flag has come out as Simper's trying to make a run at a ground ball that's got free. See what this whistle is once Wasatch scoops it up. And there is your scoop. Emmett eventually came up with it. The officials blow this one dead, and we're going to have a penalty yeah, I think, on Wasatch. I think Cam Hall got his stick a little bit high, so he's going to have to go into the penalty box. A minute 07 left to go here in the second half. Another good defensive play from Emmett, Ty. You mentioned that was a pretty good move from Park. Looked like he was going to have a chance to get into the alley and make the shot. Emmett does a good job on the help side coming over and stopping the attack, and Provo has to force it outside. But do they do draw the power play. Well, the officials have this one all squared away. Ready to get the action going again. 14-1, to 1, Wasatch is in front. And if you're just joining us, you're listening to Wasatch High School Lacrosse here this evening. Boys lacrosse team flirting with a top five ranking in the RPI as the season's getting ready to come to a close. Bulldogs with the ball and on the attack here. Park fumbles the pass there that was coming out from Neal and can't scoop it up. Thought he had it, didn't have it. Jack coming in, trying to snatch it away. Now Jack kicks it free. That's a good job from Jack Tyler. Looked like he wasn't going to be able to get it. So instead he kicked it free like a soccer player. Goes over and scoops it up. Now Jack gets knocked to the turf, Tyler, and he loses his stick. And the ball rolls free. Shorts comes away with it. Now over to Verdorn. And Verdorn is looking for a little space. That's a lot of action and contact there, Tyler. Probably the most we've seen in this game so far. And we got a whistle on it. I think we got a timeout from Provo. They're going to try to punch one in. Going back to Jack Emetai, he's a nephew. And then we had some fun a couple of weeks ago. We did our their, our top 20-ish baseball players that have ever gone through Wasatch Ish High School. Is, is because we had to go we, by We position. had to win by position. Well, right, and so there yes. were some players that maybe got left out, but but it was, it was pretty close. It was a pretty good list. And it's caused a little bit of a conversation in the Valley. And so when it comes to top athletes to ever go through Wasatch, Jack Emmett's uncle, Kurt McEwen, is probably in the conversation, right, of one of those best athletes. And you can see <laughs> we're excited on the football field. Ty, he's a really good football player as well. Going to be a junior next year. Not, not, not the arm, but, but definitely a good athlete. You're going to see him on the field this year, either on the offense or defensive side of things. Kurt uh, played at BYU. Played at BYU was but a played two-sport athlete. One of their better teams, and Max Hall, who ended up playing No, played behind NFL. John Beck, actually. Oh, was it Beck? Yeah, it was the Beck's me. years. And, uh, yeah, so he played with John Beck, and John I, Beck I ended up getting drafted. Under Max Hall, though, he might have been both. He might have been under both. Max, Max Hall yeah, as well. Yeah, I think so, he was yeah. at the tail end of Beck and then the Hall years. You're, I think you're right. But both those guys drafted, right, in the NFL, so played played behind two good ones. Yeah, so really unfortunately, even though he's super, super athletic and, and quality quarterback, just didn't get a lot of time behind those NFL-caliber quarterbacks, Ty. But, uh, but a lot of fun to watch on that Wasatch second-place football team was the, the quarterback there. And you're seeing the athletic genes, as you're saying here from, you say nephew? That's nephew. his uncle there? Yep. So yep. Jack's done a good job here in this game. Got a lot of action on the defensive side in this one as well. Out of the timeout, Bulldogs have the ball, only 22 seconds to do something with it. Park looking to the middle. Oh, that's a good setup, Ty. Wow, what they did. They're going to get a goal off of that one. I, you think they, they meant to do that, Ty? Well, <laughs> if, if they didn't, they, they had me fooled. They ran Simper into the middle and threw a high pass, and he stretched his arm out for it. Ty looked like it was going for him. And then waiting behind as they drew all the eyes over there was Keegan Neal, who's one of their better players, Tyler. And, and Neal just took that pass that looked like it went over the head of Simper. Grabbed it, snatched it, and threw it to the back of the goal. And uh, a nice design, if that's what it was. Well, not I think a, a good mistake. Watching so. Simper's reaction, I, I think he might have forgotten what the play was because I'm pretty sure that was where the design was supposed to go. And Simper almost picked it off and almost took away that scoring opportunity. <laughs> he well, was pretty apologetic. Draw it up that way next time because that worked. 
makes the score 14 to 2. Faceoff is won by Wasatch, and Spencer wants points before this one closes. Leads it forward. Oh, the Pearson. pass is dropped there by Pearson. He gets it back up, and Tyler, what? he puts it in. What a play, Tyler. <laughs> Turned and threw the ball towards the goal and is scooped up and in between the Provo goalie's legs. He, he and kinda, he's surprised yeah. that one got in as well. That's exactly right. He stood there like, wait a second. I'm supposed to be the assist guy. Did somebody put that in for me, or did that go into the net? Well, Ty, put that down as a potential good spot A play of the <laughs> That's game. That's right. I like that. I like Pearson that. Pearson turns and fires that one in late. It only took eight seconds off the faceoff. We've had a couple goals here in 16 seconds between these two teams, Tyler, as Provo took a timeout. With 22 seconds left, they got a point. Now Wasatch got, has a point. Excuse me, got a point. They they responded with a point there. <laughs> 15 to 2 is your score, and and maybe the fireworks aren't done yet. Still have a little time. Wasatch going to bring Seth Johnson on for this faceoff. The official puts the ball down at midfield. There's your whistle. Johnson battling to scoop it up. The clock is ticking away, and it looks like the clock is going oh. to expire, Tyler, before anyone can really get control of it. Two seconds, one second, and there it is. The horn in the first half expired. You had an O there, Tyler. We had a little extra contact no, a little, a little before conf- that one. A little con- collision happening, but uh, no harm, no foul. Well, they wear the helmets for a reason out here, right? It's a contact sport. That's a dominating first half for Waz. That's leading 15-2 to two over Provo, and it doesn't get much prettier than the offense that they were running in this one, Tyler. saw a little bit of everything. Deep shots, good curls around on the corner, some great passing. Good defensive presence here from the Wasps, and they have a very significant lead right now, 15-2. to two. We'll talk about a little more here on the Guild Mortgage Halftime Show coming up after the break. And it's been a good one tonight. The Wasps are dominating down here at Provo High School, leading 15-2 to two at the halftime, and it's time for our Guild Mortgage Halftime Show, Tyler. And it's been a pretty turbulent time over the last year with interest rates going who knows all over the place. And I'll tell you what, if you're unsure what to do financially right now, we would highly recommend Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage to just go talk to him, Tyler. He's, he's not going to try to take advantage of you. He'll talk about your options, give you all kinds of scenarios that maybe you haven't thought of before, and, uh, and would encourage you to go stop by Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage. We've both used him. You've had a great experience with Tom in, in, on multiple occasions. Oh, yeah, so. multiple occasions. And, and that's, I give him a, lo- a lot of credit, if not all the credit, for us being able to live in Heber. I'm a teacher, right? And, and, and Heber's an expensive place to be. But because of his advice, uh, we, we have a great home here in Heber City. Well, and then, home prices are starting to turn a little bit. If you've been watching the market, it's not a bad time at least to stop in and just say, hey, here's where I'm at. What are some options? And uh, he knows it. And not only does he know the market in general, but he's a Heber guy, and so yeah. he's going to be able to give you great advice on this valley that we live in and lead you in the right direction. And, and, and something I really appreciated about Tom when I spoke with him, Tyler, is is he's not looking to take advantage of anyone. No, it, it's, no. it's not about the dollar for him. It's, it's more about the service he wants to give and, and, and just does a good job for you there. Not to mention, we're, we're going to give him a little extra credit here, Tyler, because he's, he's really the main driver for why we're down here right now. Is, is Tom kind of reached out to us about lacrosse and, and uh, had some interest in, in getting this on the radio this year. And it's been a great experience for us, Tyler, a really fun sport, and, and it's growing. It's growing a lot. If you have not had a chance to watch a lacrosse game, this is our first year, too. We, we were novices or novice with this, Tyler, and, and it's been fun learning. It's an exciting game. Uh, it's a mixture. We've kind of talked about a little bit of definitely would throw hockey in there, Tyler. It's got a little football feeling to it. The offense reminds me a little bit about basketball. Yeah, You've got some soccer vibe of. out there as well with it. It, it just kind of combines a lot of the fun with the other sports. And, man, you got some contact from time to time. If you're looking for the contact, you've certainly got that as well. So appreciate Tom uh, doing what he can to get this one moving in that right direction. And we'd encourage you to check it out as well. Ty, let's move over to this this game because it's been a good one for Wasatch. What does the first half stats tell us as to how Wasatch got to a 13-point lead here at the break? Well, it's been five field goals for the Wasatch offense. They haven't <laughs> been able to punt now. It's 15-2 to two the score, and I'm going to try to just run you down. Since you coach Skyler South, though, yeah, you it's love fantastic. your field goals so fantastic. much, Tyler. I'm saying it's I'm, a couple touchdowns is, is what happened here. I, Matt I, Kelson, <laughs> he found his JoJo running down the <laughs> sideline, and JoJo's got a couple touchdowns. A couple here. touchdowns with the two-point conversion. That, that's what we got so far today. Let's jump into the scoring tie. Owen Moore with a couple of goals. Connor Osborne with a goal. Caleb Taylor with a goal. Uh, excuse me, Caleb Taylor with two goals. Cole Land has three goals. He now has 43 goals on the year. He's number three in the state in that category. Jace Jorgensen has a goal. Spencer Bodley with a goal. Gary Pearson has his first goal of the year. How about Miles Brown getting some action? He has his first goal on the season. And then Porter Ware, who's got now back-to-back. Well, excuse me, he didn't score in the Skyview game, but had four goals in the Spring Bowl game, two goals here tonight in the first half. What's the most memorable goal out of those for you? I like Miles Brown. 
down. That's all I was going to say. That was fun. Probably one of the more memorable yeah. ones, snaking his way through yeah. Tyler, but, but the other t- in the end. So right? Pearson was fun. Um, Jorgensen's goal where he comes in yeah. off the bench, gets the takeaway, and then goes coast to coast and is able to score. That was pretty. And then, yeah, Pearson. And it's his reaction. Like, that was a man who had scored a TD and didn't know what celebration he was ready for. You know, he needs to prepare <laughs> those things a little bit. But, no, that was fantastic there at the end. Provo does a good job. They call a timeout, set up a nice play, get their second goal of the year. And then Wasatch says, no. Not of the year. Of the game. Yeah, <laughs> Seems, like that. Seems like that. It's been their second goal of the game. And Wasatch says, no, we want this 13-goal lead. And Pearson's able to connect. And it was a tough shot, Ty, about, about 15 yards out from almost goal line extended. And how he squeaked that thing in, I'm not sure. It was an exciting end to the first half because of it, though, Tyler. It's, he's, he's played well. And, in fact, that, that maybe let's transition over here to some of the standout moments here in players from the first half, Tyler. Your offensive attacker of the first half so far. Who does that go oh, to? Oh, man, Ty. I mean, it's just uh, what I was going to say is what standed out to me is just the depth of this Wasatch team and how they've played so many guys. But uh, as far as the standout goes, I mean, it seems like – Cole Lentz kind of like the QB. You can go to him every single game. He's got a, three goals and an assist today. But I've really liked how Gary Pearson's played. He's kept his head up. I like Porter Ware coming in again. He's been good on the offensive side of things. The, the face-off guys, they haven't lost, Ty. I mean, how can you go away from the face-off when you haven't lost a face-off in the game and, and today? Ty, the, you've had three different names come in there, yep. right? Uh, Bodily, Spencer Johnson. Bodily, Seth Johnson, and then um, uh, Jonah Ware, a freshman. So you got a senior, junior, and freshman. And so, again, future's bright for this one. They're this program, they're deep, and uh, they've played well. I do think the first quarter, too, something that was noticeable as we were watching, Caleb Taylor yeah. really orchestrated the offense well. Sure. He had a couple goals himself as well, Tyler, but but there was noticeable moments as well where he was backing out and trying to set up his teammates in very specific ways. Taylor, it, it's been good across the board. We could talk about every player out here, Tyler, but those are some of the ones that, that are notable. This is going to be the harder question, Tyler. Defender of the game there's just not been a lot of opportunity no, for the defenders but, but the so two, out of the little action you've seen yeah the two out. the two that stick out to me Josh Dickerson played really well in that first quarter created I think two maybe three takeaways and did a great job of just being physical Jack Emmett I thought was the yeah. standout in the second quarter so those two I'm going to give the nod as your defensive player so far well in the and game. it probably is by quarters right because because Emmett uh, Trey Cherry and, and, and a few did, um, kind of your backup group yeah, was backup in there in the second quarter in the quarters, second quarter yeah. and they were good Tyler yeah, really but good. Josh this, this might have been the best game I've I think watched so. Josh this year so. And, and we haven't seen all of them, Ty, but he's been so assertive on the defensive side, just really aggressive on the attack to hold that defensive line. And, and so he's kind of my standout as well, Ty. But but it's been good across the board for Wasatch. You've talked a little bit about it with the face-off guys. Our offensive guys we talked about have been really good. And then, of course, the defenders being great. Poor goalie hasn't had much action. No. You know, you haven't had a lot of time to talk about the goalie here for Wasatch. But it's been good for the Wasatch all the way around. Your final one, Tyler, your favorite play, standout moment of the first half. <laughs> Brought to you by Good Spot Day. I, Pearson's was good to score in the last 10 seconds there, but I'm still going to go with the Jorgensen. That was just awesome. He gets the takeaway, goes coast to coast, connects in the back of the net. The sophomore, Jace Jorgensen, gets my uh, play of the first half. Well, you're listening to Wasatch High School Lacrosse. The first half has come to a close, and halftime is coming to a close. About 10 seconds left here on the clock. Wasatch is leading big, 15-2. to two. Gives me a chance to to take a minute. To, we're talking about a lot of good things down here, but I'm going to take a minute to brag about... Uh, my color man partner here, Tyler. I'm going to put you on the spot, and and uh, you got an award yourself. Speaking of good things, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag for a minute. Tyler here, if you weren't aware, Baird is a teacher, as as am I, and he won the Teacher of the Year award here this week. So, Ty, congratulations to you. A, a very much well deserved award. Doing great things over there as a math teacher at the high school, and and I know you're too modest and humble yourself to ever say anything about it. But I'm going to bring it up, and and uh, congratulations to you on that award. Thank you, Ty. And, and just to follow up on that. We talk a lot about how good these kids are, but what a great community we live in. That that every we, there's a there's a monetary value that we get in winning this award, and, and they gave out four to, to high school teachers, and then also middle school teachers, and elementary school teachers, and it's a, it's a big chunk of money that's all donations from this great community that we live in. So very grateful. Thank you, Ty, and I, I appreciate you that. But also just thank you to this great community. I mean, we we've got more Wasatch fans down here at Provo than we have Provo, Provo fans, fans on the other yeah. side. So and, and Ty, just a great community. A lot of students come down yeah, to Wasatch right? and, and it's just fun it's a great it, it's place a to work great great place to work Wasatch High School because of the community because of the students and we love coming down here to things like this to support and, and see the students as well Get miracles it. do happen Ty Provo <laughs> has won a face off do you think Spencer just got bored on that like I'm gonna give him one here I'll throw him a bone I doubt it Ty he's pretty competitive out yeah, there I but. think maybe a coaching move right we need to work on our defense a little <laughs> bit more Spence I want I want you to you know, Provo does get take the, a dive, take a dive on the face off. Face off here to start the second half, and the Bulldogs 
will have the ball, Tyler. Down by 13. It's 15 to 2. And we're just underway here in the third quarter. Wasatch Lacrosse leading big. They've only got two games left in their regular season, this being one of them. And then they have Cedar Valley on Friday. On the attack is Neal. He's looking for the corner, Tyler. Excuse me, that's Park who had that. Looking at a shot and couldn't quite get the stick extended to get it towards the goal. I'm wondering if they're going to call that a shot or not. I don't. I, are they going to call if, it? If they call it a shot, Provo will keep it. If if they say it was a pass and it looked more like a pass, the goal was about 45 degrees to the left, and the ball went straight That's, out. I think you could say just a bit outside on well, that shot. The officials are going to give the generous nod to Provo. Ty, they're going to keep it and say it was a shot. So the Bulldogs will keep the possession. Now it's Neil with the ball. He's going to inbound it. Trying to work at the top, getting a screen from Wakefield, but doesn't really take the screen. So Sluga takes an opportunity to give a good stick check and turn Neil back the other direction. Yeah, Wasatch going with the starters here to start the second half. You got Sluga out there, Cherry, Stone, Dickerson, Adam Bodily, Colby. Neil looking for his teammate. Now working on the left alley. He's got a little angle in there, and wow, what a shot, Tyler. Was able to slip that one right by Jackson Stone, who was coming up to make a stop. There was not a lot of room there as Stone had the goal kind of blocked, but the, the shot just low enough got below the right arm of Stone and was able to slip its way through. So make it 15-3, to three, Provo now down by two. Yeah, Zach Evanson in the goal for the first time, Ty. He's got one save on the year, kind of a third-string goalie there, but good to see them him out there. I had him in class last year. Great kid. Yeah. And yeah. good to see him fun, out on the field. Fun seeing Zach get some time out here, Tyler. Shouldn't loves, say great kid. Great young man. Great, loves, great young man. Loves the sport. Yeah. Works hard. Loves sports all the time. Loves together, sports. Tyler. Yeah, he's just a fun chat. We should have him on the radio. He'd be great to have on the radio to chat sports. Back to midfield we go for the faceoff. And it's going to be bodily again. And Spencer wins this one, Tyler. He's seen enough of Provo with the possession, so he's going to get this one back. And now Wasatch is going to have the ball on the attack, leading by 12. Lent. Looking back up top to Osborne. Looks like it caught Connor off guard. Tyler didn't have the stick in the right position and couldn't handle the pass. Provo is going to snatch away a ground ball on the still. But Adam Bodily comes over, and he's going to put his man down to the turf. The ball goes out of bounds, and that's going to create a turnover. Wasatch should get this one back. No, they threw a flag on that oh, tie, so it's going to end up being a power play there for Provo. Yeah, it was a late flag, and it was one of those, you know, where sometimes the official is very confident, like, yep, that's a flag. This was more of like, I don't want anybody to know I'm throwing this flag. <laughs> so he kind of slipped it out of his pocket gradually. But it will be a power play opportunity here for Provo. Tell you a guy I'm already going to keep my eye on here in the second half. Doesn't look like Ben Sluga is playing with some yeah. vengeance yeah, out there bet. right now. Tyler, very aggressive. He looks incredibly engaged on the defensive side. Hasn't been able to play for a while due to injury, but he's excited to be out there. And, and frankly, there's just not been a lot of action defensively no. as well. He seems to be licking his chops. Wakefield looking to get around Cherry. Goes all the way to the sideline, and now he's got the base working towards Ben. Ben holding that corner. Forces a pass out to Verdorn. Verdorn. Back up top to Wakefield. That's Shorts, excuse me. That's Shorts with the ball. Shorts makes a move on Cherry. Does get by. Has a shot towards the goal. Bounces up and over the crossbar. No one behind for Wasatch. So the Bulldogs keep the possession. Down to eight, eight minutes left to go. Ty Wasatch leading by 12, 15 to 3. That was that was what I was going to note, Tyler. The mercy rule has been activated with the Wasatch up by double digits here in the second half. Nice save here from Evanson, Ty. Great job there from Zach. Yeah, Zach blocks it. Tyler on the shot, and now Sluga scoops it up. Ben on the run. Gone about 60 yards. Make it 70 now as he's across the 30. Now circling in a double team. Now reverses going back to the 40. Being harassed over here by Shorts. Ben just snaking back and forth, and now he finally has Lent. And Ben's going to come off and get a breather, Tyler, after hustling down the field. Cole sprinting down deep in the left alley, back behind this, the stick to the X to Moore. Moore curls and has a good look, but that's a good save there in the goal, Tyler. Provo, the goalie, was able to ricochet that one out of bounds. And no one behind for Wasatch as Moore was working on the cor curl and nobody wrapped around to the X position. So the Bulldogs take it away. On the pass out, though, Moore tips the pass. It hits the back of the net. Provo is going to come around and scoop this one up. It's the goalie, Tyler. Wasatch all over this, sandwiching him into a triple team. Now the Bulldogs have it let out, and they're trying to make a run coming back the other direction. It's Kine. Coin is checked down to the ground. The ball trickles forward and is finally scooped up by Neal. That's a hard-working man there for Provo to get that thing across midfield, running through the well, that 300 could be, Spartans that, could, that were <laughs> That could be an offensive adjustment for Provo. As goalie, when you get it, you just go. Just and run. that was impressive. That was an impressive run from the goalie. We haven't seen a lot of great passing happening on their side of the well, field. And it was just for a minute. I, I, I was checking to make sure it was the goalie tight because another guy slid in when he saw the goalie. He had the eye of the tiger. 
And uh, but it was the goalie who went all the way down. Neil for save. Provo takes a shot, and and Evanston again comes in and has another good save. Tyler making an impact here in the third quarter. Six thirty left here in the third quarter. Wasatch leading fifteen to three. Wakefield curling around from the left side for the nice. Bulldogs. Bodily, good job. Nice Hits play. the base of the stick. Knocks the ball free and gets the steal. Leads it to Dickerson. Josh now on the run. See if Josh can get himself a, a goal here. Defensive man into the offensive side. Looking for a shot. Now he leads it over to Taylor. And Josh is going to turn and trot back over to the defensive side. I had a moment to take his shot. Now out to Kiefer. Kiefer looking for a ground ball shot. Ty worked that ball around and kind of bowled it towards the goal. That's a nice little lick. Haven't seen that from a lot of players yet, but the ball went wide to the left. Wasatch keeps the possession in the hands of Moore. Something we haven't seen. What about, you know, the, the shootout, right? Like when you have that hockey shootout, you know, like we haven't seen that on lacrosse. Like you just go one-on-one with the goalie. You'd probably have to shoot it from a certain distance, really right? Like you get, goalie, you get pretty, it? but you yeah. have to shoot it within like ten yards, maybe. Yeah, I mean, in, in hockey, right? You're floating on ice; it's hard to stop that. Thing. Yeah, you got cleats on on the football field, and plant and fire. That's that's a tough thing for the goalie. Oh, there's a good nice lead pass. pass to Osborne and a great fake from Connor Tyler. It was Kiefer who had the pass, and he threw from about the 35. Osborne was just outside the left crease, caught it up high. Pumped to the right and then went back over his left shoulder and put it into the back of the net. That's a really, really nifty job there with the stick and Osborne getting a goal and putting Wasatch back in front 16-3. to Yeah, with the running clock down to five minutes left to go here in the, sec- or excuse me, in the third quarter. But that, that's good offense, Ty. Provo is definitely up their intensity, a lot more physical here in the second half, especially on the defensive side. But, again, a good job of keeping the poise. Kiefer keeps his head up, finds a wide-open Osborne. And he was so open, Ty, like you said, he was able to make a fake and still have time to put that ball in the back of the net. Where to midfield, Jonah Ware, that is the freshman, and he wins the faceoff. And Ware doesn't have anyone stopping him. He's across the 20 to the 15, looking for a shot. Now he's got four guys to come over and cut him <laughs> off, Tyler. And that shot is stolen away. So back we come the other direction here. Bulldogs looking for some space. Hall, who had a great first half. Tyler's going to come and check over the Bulldogs, make them back out and, and kind of work a little harder offensively. There's a whistle tie, and they got a procedure penalty here on Pro. It might might be a shot or a, a clock violation, not getting into the box in uh, quick enough time. Dickerson crosses midfield, floats it forward to Jorgensen. Jorgensen, kind of a touch pass over to Pearson. Gary Pearson, about the 15-yard line in the left alley, looking out for his teammate. Jorgensen, oh, good play there from Jay Styler. Came right around midfield, tiptoeing midfield, knowing he couldn't cross back over, or at least attempting not to cross back over on the over and back, Tyler, and he got it right at the line. The officials let it play, and Wasatch is going to keep the possession. 16, let's see, Ty, Julian Kent well, with the ball. He's making some noise, Tyler. Fakes left, goes right as Kent. Kent has a look at the goal, and the pass just sails just to the right. Had a little tailing action. The ball doesn't find its way out of bounds. Wasatch scoops it back up, and Taylor has the ball right now in the right alley. Yeah, Ware's playing that exposition, Ty, and he's just going to kind of wait and see when he can get that l- seam. He's going to creep up towards the goal right now. Taylor to Jorgensen. Tyler, and I'm telling you, there's not a lot of guys on this team that have the shot ability that Jorgensen does. Fading to the right, he's able to get the arms fully extended again and puts a laser to the back of the net. Wasat strikes again 17-3 to off of the Jorgensen goal. Second goal of the day for Jorgensen. Wasatch now with a couple of touchdowns and a field goal. Is that better for you, Ty? Yeah, yeah give me the touchdowns, Tyler. <laughs> I'm not paying money to go watch the field goal kicker. I'm going to watch the quarterback and the receivers. I was talking to uh, Denny Salbum, the dad of, of uh, mentioned I and mean, I was asking him, you know, transfer portal, you know, Matthias and Southam action back at BYU and sounds like I think uh I think Scott is still technically on the Utah team, but I think he's he's got a family now and ready to move on Probably with life a little bit. Yeah. It'd be yeah. fun to see what did what able yeah. to, to get on there and earn some time, Tyler. Wasatch wins the face off leading by fourteen. Two thirty left here in the third quarter. Taylor in the right alley, goes behind to Ware. Ware fakes right, goes left, now spins back to the right, looking for space. Has the ball knocked free. Taki Taki giving him fits. Now Ware passes out to Pearson. Pearson going to swing it back to the top of the alley there on the left side to Kent. And Kent's going to trot over to about the 40 and make his move. Given plenty of space, fakes left, now right, now back into the middle, but lost the ball. Tyler, the ball hits the turf. But Wasatch is able to be there to scoop that one back up with Hanson who's come in for some time again. Hansen's got some good run in this game so far. 
Now Hanson trying to make the same move from the top that Kent just did. Now passes to Taylor. Taylor back up top to Kent. Kent has an, a lane, and he's got a shot, and he's got a goal. Kent from the left side from about 10 yards out scoops that one up and bounces it in. Wasatch now ahead, 18-3. to three. It's a good shot from Kent, Ty, and, and a good offense. You know, that was Hanson, as you said, triggered it. Didn't like the lane. Makes a high pass to Taylor. Taylor made a great catch. Taylor then finds Kent wide open there in the alley, and uh, Kent takes care of business. Good job. And on the mercy rule, Tyler, the clock continues to wind even after a made goal. So these will be really quick quarters as the clock's still ticking as the teams come back to midfield getting ready to go. Johnson in midfield for this one on the faceoff. Official puts the ball down, backs off, and there's your whistle. Johnson traps the ball, now turns the stick to cradle it, and he's got it. Floats it up here to his teammate. I think that's Hall, Tyler. Looking to, no, excuse me, that's Tucker. Calderwood. Tucker Calderwood, yeah. Calderwood spinning on the right side, now passes back up top to Pearson. Calderwood's going to sprint off. Johnson's going to come on. Ball hits the turf here for a moment for Wasatch Tyler, and they're actually going to turn this one over. Taylor took a big pop trying to get that ball in. Bulldogs on the attack coming the other direction. Neal leads it forward to Simper. Simper being harassed there by Cherry. Simper moving back over to the middle. Now to Shorts. Shorts backing out from about the 20. He wants a deep shot, and that one sails wide to the right. Zach Evanson on goal there for Wasatch, ready for that one. Yeah, third stringer's done a good job, Ty. Gave up an early goal in the quarter, but since then's had two saves on shots on goal. Bulldogs keep the ball, but the pass is dropped, and the player didn't even know it. So Wasatch snatches it free, but the clock expires, and the third quarter comes to a close with Wasatch dominating, leading 18-3 to in this one. And some fireworks in the third extend the lead. Wasatch in front big. Fourth quarter action coming up. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined, furnishing some flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of first. Fourth quarter action brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. Mirror Lake Station is your stop for gas, groceries, and goodies. Owners David and Kristen Wade invite you to swing by and say hello this season at Mirror Lake Station. Oh, Ty, what a face-off. One here by Jonah Ware, the freshman, going up against a guy that quite literally is about twice his size and simper. And Ware just battling there, tooth and nail, is able to come away with that one against the bigger body. Even got checked to the ground at one point and kept the ball in his possession and floats it up to Wasatch teammates. Wasatch has the ball in their possession. Ends up going to Ware at the X, and X, or, or Ware excuse me, gets a curl on the right side. A good look, shot on goal, but a better save there from the goalie of Provo. Yeah, this is going to be, a, and I'm interested to see what they call here because it was a check, to, what it looked like to be a high check, like to the face on where that's the case. It might be an extended penalty, and a even if Wasatch scores, he's going to have to stay in the box. Yeah, it was, it was Simper, I believe, that they got Tyler on that face off, and, and that was that's what I was mentioning when, when Ware went to the ground, Jonah, that is. It was when Simper came over and hit him after the face off, Tyler, and the flag came out, but Wasatch was able to work the ball around and get a shot on the goal from Porter where they are going to call that tie so I can't remember the phrase but this is the first power play actually of the game for Wasatch yeah they haven't needed them leading 18 to 3 and Ty, how about the, the time that this is taking from the officials the mercy rule is still running the clock so the entire time we've been waiting it's been about a minute and well, a half that's come off the clock in this one do you want to share your cottonwood story when we did well, this sure, yeah. <laughs> so football so it's about seven or eight years ago now at this point wasatch was leading i think 52 to zero over yeah, cottonwood yeah and uh in football the mercy rule runs when you're up by by 35 and cottonwood had no interest in, in uh playing this game anymore and Wasatch had just scored they were kicking off Cotton would take a long time to get the ball out there for the kickoff get their players there Wasatch kicked it off and the ball went out of bounds and so a procedure penalty you usually take that because you get great field position well Cottonwood took a while to decide took a couple minutes off the clock meanwhile the clock's still running and then made Wasatch re-kick it and uh and and 
Yeah, the clock's running. They end up they end up working four minutes off the clock without playing any <laughs> game just to get it over with. I, they didn't want any more game to happen, and Wasatch ended up winning. And that was tough radio for four minutes to talk about what was going on when nothing was going on. <laughs> Uh, after I'm explaining that story, Tyler Wasatch has worked their way offensively back and forth with the ball and took a shot on goal. They did miss. Spencer bodily in. There's a shot on goal. Goalie makes another save. Porter Ware is able to scoop it up. Passing outside to Pearson. Pearson back up top to Bodily. Bodily up top to Jorgensen. Jorgensen trying to give a heater in there, but that's batted down by Shorts. Good defensive play, and the ball trickles out of bounds through the end zone of Provo. Yeah, still called that a shot. Tyson Wasatch able to retain possession. It'll be Pearson who's going to bring it up. Back to Bodily, back to Jorgensen at the top of the box. Clark has a good look on the goal, and Clark's got another goal, Tyler. That one low to the left, and Clark's able to find the back of the net. Hard job for the goalie who had the stick shaded high and right. Looked like Clark read that well and put the ball down and low. Hard for the goalie to adjust and make the save. Well, one thing we've seen out of the Wasps today, Ty, and, and, and this Provo team clearly is not, you know, a top caliber t- program. But when Wasatch has played in the past, it's been those shots where they're slashing right in front of the goal, right by the crease and getting the ball in. We've seen numerous shots made from 10 to 15 yards out today. And so, if anything, Wasatch may be getting some confidence along those lines or getting some practice taking some of those outside shots. Leading big, 19-3 to is the score. Wasatch leading over the Provo Bulldogs. You're listening to Wasatch High School Lacrosse. Johnson wins another faceoff. Tyler actually scooped that one up back between his legs to Ben Sluga. Sluga has the ball in his possession, cradling it in the right hand now. On a sprint, he's across midfield to the 40, down to the 30. Ben surveying the defense. Going to float it down deep in the right alley. Jorgensen, not excuse me, not Jorgensen. This is Pearson. Check hi. That's Ty. Excuse me. That's Kent. Is that Kent in there? I'm having a hard time uh, on the number. No, 47. That is the high that one pop on there. there near the head, Tyler. You got check there. I don't have that one. That's a new player. That's Let me a look new it player. up real quick. So this this will turn out to be a, a penalty again on Provo Tyler Jackson on the illegal Welch. hit. Welch there. Excuse me for not knowing that before. So Welch was working his way back around behind the net and trying to curl around the right crease. And, man, he got hit high, Tyler. And giving up some size was checked back to his uh, derriere, if you will. (laughs) And the officials threw the flag out there. Thank goodness for Winnie the Pooh that I actually know what that means now. (laughs) Without without Winnie the Pooh, I wouldn't know what that means. See if Wasatch can break the 20-point mark here, Tyler. 7.15 left in this one. The Wasatch have a power play. Sluga is going to stay in offensively here. He's at the top of the box. Let's get Sluga a goal. Ball working his way down to the right alley to Welsh. Welsh working through a triple team, Tyler. Checked. The ball comes free. Trying to scoop it back up, and we've got it. Wasatch still maintains the possession. Going to float this one out to Hansen. Hansen back up top to Sluga. Sluga working his way out around to the right. Still searching for space. Good spin move from Ben. Draws a triple team. Now passes down low to Welsh. Back up top to Hansen. Hansen shot just left of the goal. Porter Ware behind, running at it. It's going to ignite the offense here from the back. Have another penalty on Provo, so it looks like Provo is going to have two guys in the box. Penalty box, that is. That'll be Carson Shorts that this one's <laughs> going to go against, Ty. Shorts coming off. Although the Bulldogs did sneak. Okay, now we've got another one coming on. I was going to say they were sneaking a player on as one came off with the penalty. It looked like they were going to keep the same numbers, but... That's just for a moment, as the Bulldogs are also going to bring Taki Taki off the field. So six on four right now, Wasatch on the attack. Major advantage in their favor, already leading by 16. Sluga wants a shot. Elevator shot sails high. Tyler over the crossbar. Scoop that one down low like he had a sandwich out there, Tyler. Really, really low scooping shot. No good. Wasatch will keep the possession, though. Where has the ball? Out to Welsh. Back to Sluga. Sluga working the ball around the perimeter to Hansen. Hansen quickly back up to Sluga. Ben thinks about a shot. Now over to Welsh. Welsh, his shot is saved by the goalie. Nice hands there from the goalie of Provo. They're going to try to kill this power play of Wasatch now. Wasatch has the advantage by two players, but Provo with the possession right now. Yeah, one already into the game, Ty, so they're able to get one on. Now the Bulldogs only have two players Uh, back on defense. That That wasn't good. That was a penalty, Ty, but the officials missed it. Only two officials One. tonight instead of three. And I'll tell you, a Bulldog player heads up that's McLean noticed, and he kind of trotted back, trying to look unassuming coming from the offensive side, and he got away with it, Ty, so the Bulldogs avoid another procedure penalty, and they've still got the possession in their favor. Down to only five minutes left in this ball game. Wasatch is leading big, 19-3. to 
Provo looking for a shot, and there is a shot towards the goal. It hit the crossbar, Ty? Yeah, hit, hit the hit the, the side post. post. Ricochet out of bounds. Good hustle there from Jack Gammon. Wasatch is able to regain possession. Under five minutes left to go. Wasatch lead 19-3. I wanted to talk. This has been a good tune-up, Ty. The game on Friday, it's going to be senior night. It's going to be a good crowd. Stop on by to Wright Tree Stadium and tune in here to heat on uh, 94.5 The Peak because that's going to be a good one. Cedar Valley, a top 15 team in the state, and it'll be for the region title in that one. Miles Brown's checking. He's working hard to get this ground ball back in his favor, Tyler. The ball is trickling around, and it is won by Wasatch. Now Sluga making run down the left side. Wasatch still on a power play, although one player, well, Provo's going to try to sneak a few more guys. They've got six back here on defense, side, and they are not supposed to with the power play that's been going on. But the Bulldogs have six guys back there. Wasatch looking for some space, and they've got it. There's a scoop. Ooh. There's a check in the back. A flag does come out. Provo getting a little desperate here, Ty. There's another that, that was, on him. That was a confident flag throw. We talked yes. about the slip out of the pocket. That was... Luke Bangeter was the, the Wasatch player on the receiving end of that illegal hit, Ty. He went down to his knees after getting checked from the back. Made it easy for the official to throw that flag. Under four minutes left to go now, and they've, they've actually I think we might have a timeout, and this might be a good timeout if you're Wasatch, because you, you're right, Ty. This game's way in control, Provo getting a little bit desperate. Probably a good timeout here from the Wasatch staff to just calm everybody down. We'll take it as well. Wasatch up big, 19-3 to over Provo, four minutes left in this one. Four minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Wasatch lacrosse is well on their way to moving their record to 11-4 and on the year. Came into this game 10-4, and ranked number six in the RPI. 5-0 in region play, and now leading 19-3 to with just under four minutes left to go. I think you could safely assume those numbers are going to change in Wasatch's favor, Ty. Hoping that RPI can move up here into the top four. Out of the timeout, Sluga has a good look at the shot from the left alley. Tyler again trying to go low, but it's batted down by Provo. Wasatch gets the possession back. They're looking for Ben, trying to give him another shot. Ty Ben had a look at it. Now over to Hall. Hall's checked down to the ground, trying to pass this one over. But Wasatch is able to scoop this one up. It's Welsh. He's been good, Tyler, here in the fourth as well. Welsh passing for the for a teammate, Tyler, and that ball almost found its way in. Similar to what Pearson had in the first half where the ball found its way in. That one nearly caught the goalie off guard. The goalie's struggling a little bit to maintain this one, Tyler. Went to throw that out, and the ball fell out right at his feet. No Wasatch player was there to apply the pressure, though. So he picks it back up and floats it forward. Brown, though, steals this one away. Wasatch back on the attack. There's a pretty good look in front of the goal, Tyler, and the ball slipped out of the net before the shot could be taken. That was Ty Barnes. Ty Barnes. Tough break. Great, great look. It snuck in front and on the breakaway, was standing all by himself right about the crease and turned, and it's got to be a, a basketball player with a layup and no one around. <laughs> There's just so much pressure with you right there that, that the ball – just trickled out and, and he didn't have a good handle on it tyler and he missed a good look at the net wasatch does keep the possession after the shot sluga right now looking for some space on the left side ben normally plays on defense but they've given him a lot of offensive run here in the fourth quarter now he's checked and the ball finds its way to the turf tyler still fighting for the ball who's going to come up with it it's wasatch and there's another shot towards the goal but a good save that time from the provo goalie of coin yeah, 19 goals today for Wasatch Ty, and if I if I can just jump into maybe a quick Gordon Law Group recap, 11 scores today for Wasatch. So again, showing the depth, having some fun. Miles already has one tie, and man, cool. he reared up and took Ty, a shot. Yeah, he, he was dropping the hammer of <laughs> Thor on that one, Tyler. Is what it looked like. Brown came up and wound that thing up and let it fly from about 30 yards out. Sails wide to the left. I think that sailed out of the stadium, Ty. He threw that <laughs> thing so hard, it's gone. He, like. he put everything he could behind that. He's got another chance. He's making another run at this one, Ty. Intercepted the ball of the 50. Now over to his teammate, and I think we had a whistle. Yeah, offside. Wasatch had only two guys. So they do. They, they are still going to call that penalty. They didn't only, call it Only against Wasatch. <laughs> not against Provo, Ty. Provo got away If I Wasatch. can jump in, Ty, you got Owen Moore, Connor Osborne, Caleb Taylor, Cole Land, Jace Jorgensen, Spencer Bodily, Miles Brown, Archie Clark, Gary Pearson, Porter Ware, and Julian Kent all scoring today for Wasatch. And, and Ty, that's got to be, we, we often talk about your offensive players of the game, the attackers. It's really a team effort oh, today, yeah, isn't it? It's going to be hard to give that to one player. Provo does get a cheap goal coming back the other direction. Tyler in transition. Simper puts the fourth point on the board for the Bulldogs, making 19-4. to four. But that's, that's where we're going to go today for our offensive yeah, attack of the game. Everybody. Give it to, The yeah. entire team was just so good, Tyler. And, and you saw a little bit of everything, good offensive action. You had some good passing. You had some good one-on-one -on -one efforts, good defense that led to goals. It's, it's been a great game overall. Ty, you got a, you got a play that stands out to you the most in this one? 
Even before we get that, I'm going to give you a chance to think about that. Yeah, how about, yeah, how about the chance. defensive uh, standout for you? Defensive standout. How, how about we give a, a shout-out to Zach Evanson now here in goal? Okay, third-string goalie comes in cold, makes a couple of really nice saves in the third quarter. So I like Zach as that call. But also the senior, Josh Dickerson, doing a great job in the first half. Jack Emmett's played great. I think those are my three defensive standouts of the game today. I, I, I like them all, Tyler. At, at each moment in the game, those guys have been the best defensive players on the field. Oh, a D-twig there from Jack Tyler. Heard you talking about him. Emmett comes over and gets a D-twig, and he steals this one away. Ten seconds left. Wasatch back on the run. So this one's going to come to a close. Emmett out to Brown. Brown going <laughs> to shoot it from the 50-yard line, and that goes to the left. And he missed wide, but he certainly can't take it home with you. you got to give it a try. And Brown took a shot at it. 19-4 is the final, Tyler. But I like that call. Dickerson in the first was outstanding. Uh, Jack there in the second was was good, and then Zach was. Give a shout he, out to Zach. He got a lot of action his way, and he stood up to it. Ty, you did a good oh, job good. there in the second half for Wasatch. Wasatch wins big, 19 to four. And Ty, you've had enough time to think about it. Your your play of the game. Who does that go to? I'm going to Gary Pearson. I've, I've changed my mind from the first half, but his goal with ten with less than ten seconds left to go in the second. I think you like the reaction more than that the was goal fantastic. Itself. Like it was just great. One Wasatch was just fantastic on the faceoffs today. But Wasatch gives up a goal. They're only up twelve. Only up twelve in the first half, and Wasatch pushes it. Could have just held on to it, but instead they get it up to Pearson. Pearson takes a shot. Normally the assister and finds the back of the net. I'm going to give it to Gary Pearson. Ty, this one was good. Wasatch wins moving their record to 11 and 4 overall 6 and 0 in region play they get the win 19 to 4 over Provo and you have an undefeated region showdown on Friday between Wasatch and Cedar Valley and both teams will come in with a 6 and 0 record and senior night at Wasatch senior High School night should be a and, good one and we'll also have updates on on other spring sports we'll have tennis updates we'll also know whether or not uh, baseball and softball have made the postseason so a lot of action that we'll be reporting on on Friday we appreciate you joining us here tonight and making 94.5 The Peak, and part of your evening, Wasatch High School Athletics. Tyler Moss and Tyler Baird. Wasatch is victorious 19-4 over Pro Provo High School. You've been listening to 94.5 The Peak.